nigga, them just my favorite joint. Like, the, the number 16, and that's the thing, like, the fact that most motherfuckers be like, nigga, the fucking marriage Jordans? I'm like, yeah, nigga, mm-hmm. them my favorite joints. Mm-hmm. And they never bought them back out. They all the ones that they didn't retro some of you know the what? ugly <laughs> J's ever. You know what? Nah, fuck that, nigga. They didn't bought out them uh, ugly ass tens look like hospital socks with soles on them, nigga. And they keep bringing them motherfuckers out and won't re-release the 16. Bring the 16s back out. Retro them. Mm, what's your favorite though? All time. White cement three. Okay. White cement three. though. red. Or no, the blue, the, the white, the original ones. The mm-hmm. black. Then the concord. Back with the trees. In the car. I was. That was this shit that I do, man. Ain't none of this shit new. I've been doing this shit since I was a little boy. I've been having to buy my own clothes since I was thirteen, like twelve, thirteen. But that summer going into high school or that summer going into ninth grade was really well because my mother, like I said, that's a true story. My mother was buying me size 13 shoes and she was getting them for cheap. And she was like, if you don't want to keep wearing these big motherfuckers, then you gonna have to buy your own shit. And I was like, I'm gonna buy my own shit because I'm not going to high school with that motherfucking Out of all the shit, man, that is the crazy. Let me, let me see the light. <laughs> Nigga, big ass size 13. That's a you fact. Grow yeah. into them. Like, why 13 though, bro? She ain't want to get no 10s. Just straight to 13. <laughs> 13. Nine, Get the fuck out of Ain't no way you had on some shoes that was four sizes Hold too on. big. I'm going to call my little brother that nigga. Four sizes too big, that Chico. Nigga, that nigga. Chico. Four sizes. That would be like me wearing a 15 right now. Exactly. <laughs> there ain't no way you ain't hurt yourself. Hey, what, what size was the shoes I was wearing in McFarland, cuz? <laughs> we said no. we said nigga Carlos don't believe it. He like ain't no way, nigga. I'm like Whole size is hey, motherfucker 13 still fresh to death, Joe. <laughs> See, nigga had to make had to make them Joe's work. Joe's biggest shit. Type of deal my mother had worked out. She must have must have been a nigga she was fucking with or something. I don't know. You never know when you're a kid. You know. No, now, I had to wear Buster Browns for a long ass time. Though. What's Buster kind of, Browns? Like them goddamn, like the prep school shoe. <laughs> what the, the slip resistant? <laughs> nah, they like they leather. Like some of them be brown and then they have like the blue leather in the middle. Mm, I ain't never like the, like some Oxford them. dress shoe. Let me let me let me look them up real quick. <laughs> Mom um, used to dress me when I was going to school. Like, I was going to work, nigga. Khakis and a button-up. I used to act a fool about that shit. Hey, man, I hated that. These? Yeah, nigga. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, he would have, that nigga would have talked about my big-ass shoes, but if you'd have had on the goddamn 1955 this is, this is way first juke show. joints, nigga, yeah, I'd have, we'd have been at war. <laughs> yeah, man. I would have fucked some busters out, man. We'd have been at, that's what I'm saying, man. This is a message for all the young people out there that been some fans of us. I hate around so much, I used to hide them bitches. See? Listen, man, if you fans of us, just know we went through this. We went through the same time. It wasn't no social Chico, media. Show, so show the, Joe the Buster Brown. Oh, nigga. Hey, hold on. Where are the Buster Browns? These. You wore those? Nah, <laughs> Not I, me. I, See, I, look. I, my I, shit so fucked up, he thought they was me. But nah, these low Joe's you can wear. Nigga, look up Buster Brown. <laughs> I wore the fuck out some Buster Browns. I got pictures of me with the Buster Browns. I used to hide the Buster Brown, bro. <laughs> Bro, I remember we was getting ready to go somewhere, man. I acted a fool so bad about the bus around. My mom and friend said, said, please let that go. I'm talking about, I'm acting a monkey about that. She said, please let that boy wear some motion. Don't make him wear that. Don't make him wear them bus around. That was the last time. That you had to wear the bus around? Yes, I'll never forget that shit. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Nigga, I remember I hid one. I hid one. Acting like I couldn't find that shit. <laughs> my mama didn't find that shoe that we moved, my nigga. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Listen, man, we done went through it. That nigga had to wear the Buster Browns. I had to wear the Bust Down. The Tatiana's, oh, nigga. Oh, just let me tell you long this, as fuck. I was wearing the Van Style shoe <laughs> before anybody fucked with him. I be, you can ask anybody Wayne Johnson, nigga. I got into a fight with Antonio Phillips. 
I kicked the nigga in the face and his ass swole up real big like on the movie, nigga. I kicked him with the fucking hard ass. Uh, I don't know what they were, but they were just like the Vans, nigga. Mm -hmm. My mama had made me buy them the slip-on joints for the summer. Oh. Nigga, they tore my ass up. Goddamn. Three kids? companies. In Mississippi? They, they wasn't even kids. They was like some off-brand. My cousin had the motherfucking Bo Jackson that summer. Mm -hmm. The Bo Jackson, only one who had them. And I got on these motherfucking white Step boy on. surfer shoes. These right here. In the size 13, that was my first pair of size 13. <laughs> the Ben Bakers, them right there. Yeah. Them the motherfuckers Ooh. I had on first day of school, seventh grade in the size 13. Bro. He heard my cousin say on the phone, nigga, I knocked on this nigga hey. door, he opened the door. He say, man, what the fuck your shoes so big for? Man, I'm like, man, my man, come on, let's just go to school, dog. Hey, we shooting that. We gonna buy a pair of them bitches in a size 13. And we going on an adventure with Chico Bean and them bitches. The adventures of big shoes, nigga. That's what we gonna call it. Every time you shoot one, you gotta have on some 13s. Yeah, just, just bring them out like that. That's the thing, man. That. And then I went to a middle school. Like, D.C. public schools was like east side high, all of them. Nigga, so it was on. I already knew it was gonna be on when I got to school. When I got to school, I knew niggas was gonna try to cook me, but I couldn't go like that. Cause I knew I was gonna have to wear these bitches. So Who if I lose the day, niggas in your high school. Shit, my my cousin I just got off the phone with, <laughs> Daniel Lewis, uh, motherfucking um, who else? Who was another funny ass nigga? Who was a? Ah, it's hard to rank niggas. It was a lot of niggas, dog. Um, Eric Gardner. Eric Gardner was a funny ass nigga. <laughs> For real. Eric Gardner was the nigga that told me the motherfucking uh the Bobby's world. Um, who else? James. Motherfucker, my man She. My man She Sheik was the type of nigga that joan on you and say shit that's inappropriate. Like, he the type of nigga that be like, yeah, man, but I seen your mother down the strip on one one park buying that dope last night, though. That's probably why you stink right now, but she ain't take no shower because she was out all night. Like he was that type of nigga. Like, like make you want to fight him type nigga. So that's the thing, man. We like we had so many different characters in the schools, like throughout going to school, like, and they and the only way you knew that these motherfuckers was funny was because you seen them do it. Like now you got the social media, so a nigga could be a star. Like, I couldn't imagine being in McFarland and being able to look at something and see what niggas was doing at Paul or Shaw. Ain't nowhere in the world we'd have went to jail if we had social media and we were in high school. Up. We ignorant. Jail, dog. Nigga, we would have been. We, I'm glad social media wasn't out. I wouldn't have never graduated. That's what I'm saying. I would have never <laughs> graduated. Possible, dog. Ain't nowhere in the world I could see what the bitches look like at a school that I didn't go to. Because I would have. I know how much right. illegal shit I would have put up. What? With the type of man, listen, we used to like, we was, you know, we had homerooms in middle school and shit, so I was in 6'1", 6th grade, 7'3", 7th grade, and 8'1", 8th grade. Now, the homerooms, whatever homeroom you was in, that shit was like a gang, nigga, in the hallways, nigga. Whatever, whoever in your class, you better hope you got some solid niggas in your class, because you gonna get muff victimized. So we used to make these, take these newspapers, right, and roll them up real tight and wrap tape around them motherfuckers, turn them in like to a bat, nigga, catch niggas, bringing books up the back stairwell. You know, I used to have to go to get the books for the class when they change out the science book, go get the wagon and bring the, the books upstairs. Take, yeah, but get all the old ones. Get all the old ones, take them down. You know how nigga be like, ooh, let me do it just to get out of class. We used to, all day. The good student ass nigga. Nigga, we would catch that motherfucker coming up that back stairwell with them books and whoop a nigga with them motherfuckers. <laughs> That's the type of shit we was, that was fun to us. No, we was so dirty. We was dirty as hell in school, nigga. You know how motherfuckers would come to school, you know, before shit, like sit their books down and shit, you bind up, whatever. Let a nigga need a binder, nigga. All your shit going on the floor. We probably fucked up everybody's academic career. Don't fuck around, have no new books and binders and shit. We taking all that. We taking all Real that. Shit. Me and my niggas, we had, we had eye lockers as soon as you come down the steps. So it was all us right there. Didn't nobody ever lock their lock. Nigga, we had books. It was one locker full of science books. One every, every locker had the books in it, but did nobody never, you know how they assign you yeah. a book? Nigga, hey, fuck all that, nigga. Yeah, we got the books. We got books in this bitch. Damn. We had combination locks in high school that actually came off the locker. Right. Man, that nigga put, locked the lock, put the bitch on his finger. Hit the nigga in the head. Bah! 
bust this shit, man. We at school. This nigga got the meat hanging. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about good, did a different level of violence, man. Uh oh, who that? But this was just, this was just, you know, what we did to did and. What's wrong with you, man? man? Yeah, no, I ain't right. you, we man. Just out front. We trying to get in. Damn. <laughs> yeah. We going through it. Like, we couldn't, there's no way we could have, like, the access that we have now. Because we was, you got to think the difference is what this did was take the initiative or the desire to go outside away. We was outside. So all this shit that we would have been having on social media as young people would have been going on outside. Dude, I went to high school bro, with some motherfuckers. They whole goal was to be old, nigga. I'm talking about these niggas had... Real, I went to school with some real life functioning alcoholics. Went to school with this white boy named Simon. This motherfucker lit a cigarette right in the middle of the class, boy. Damn. That was the craziest motherfucker I ever met, goddamn. Simon Smith. <laughs> that was a crazy motherfucker, man. We had some legendary crazy white boys around, actually, man. And that's, that's another thing. You went to school with white people. You I ain't, ain't never went to school with, with no a white, white person in my life. From pre-K all the way to 12th grade, not one white person. Wow. Raymond Elementary School, McFarland <laughs> Middle School, Dunbar High School. Dude. Not one white person. DC was really a black city. We had some Migos. We had a, we had a, you know, some of my, some of my coldest partners is Migos. Shout out to my man Javier. Good to, Javier, my nigga. That's my man. He was we had the Migos, but we never had no white people. We had three different kinds of white people. Wilson was the Wilson was the high school that had a couple white people, from what I understand. Wilson Curl, them private schools and shit. But DC public schools, your main high schools and middle schools, were no white people going to school with us. This, the city I, was all black. I think this how do you classify the white people? So first of all, you got like the rich, preppy white people. They all kick it together, and then you got like the dirty ass poor white people. They all kick it together. <laughs> Then you got like some motherfuckers who like in between. Like they got money, but they ain't really cool and accepted like that. So they just kind of float in between the dirty motherfuckers <laughs> and the rich motherfuckers. And then you'll see them and you be like, damn, you, what the fuck you doing over here with limbo. Dustin and shit? Yeah. Like these, you know what I'm saying? In Caucasian limbo. Right. <laughs> That's tough. Then you got like the redneck cowboy type motherfuckers. They in there. You don't know who they from. Then you got with. the white people that fuck with niggas? It wasn't a whole bunch of them. It wasn't a lot of them. Like it, it wasn't a whole bunch of them. Cause yeah. if you, if like in Mississippi, if you a white person that fuck with the niggas, ain't none of the white people about to fuck with you. Damn. You don't get to do both. You either in or you out. That's why I was saying like with white people, nigga, when you know how some shit be popular, like you say you never went to school with them, nigga. If one of them do it, nigga, they all of them do it. These motherfuckers had the same shoes. They wore the same clothes. What shoes they wear? They, they all wore New Balance. She said, the she New Balance. The, uh, what's was the New Balance <laughs> joint? I had the Bo Jackson. That's one, that was like 150. The 11 somethings, the, the expensive ones with the air shit on it. What? The, the New Balance. Balance. Wow. Oh, oh, no, nah, that was the 1100. And it's so crazy. They all wore the, the New Balance 1100. They all wore khaki shorts and they all wore these fucking t shirts from like frat parties, like every single day. They all had the same watch. They had like these, uh, they used to always wear like G-Shock watches, but they had this band. They're like a Velcro band. They all had these motherfuckers. They all did the exact same shit. It's something about white people. They strange, man. This whole relationship with black people and white people is strange from the strange. beginning. Yeah. They done invited us to America. <laughs> then begged us to come over here and spend the night. Then go treat us like we like we got them ass to be here and shit. Every time we get our shit together, they come fucking it up. Every, we take all the shit they don't want and be like, well, fine. You don't want to live in the middle of the city, in the inner city? Well, fuck it. We'll make a hood over here then. It's the hood. We straight. You know what? Give us that back. Y'all having too much fun over there, man. Still not all that dope. Right. Fucking all these hoes. No, nah, man. Give me that Give shit. Give that shit back. And then they send us back to where they just left. And as soon as we get out there, the property value drop. So now them big ass houses that they that they sit at you and that, that was uh that you couldn't imagine living in. Now you living over that motherfucker <laughs> and the shit ain't worth a fuck. It ain't worth a fuck. It ain't worth nothing.
it's it's what, it is though, because you stay there. Right? Yeah, it's black home. Yeah, it's worth something they, now. They, they, but the thing is, that's the thing about us as a people. No matter where we go, we turn it into our shit. That's what I'm saying. Everywhere we go, it's our shit. Wait 10 more years with all these new neighborhoods that they build and they don't want no more. Nigga, we coming up. We coming up. All the way up. Yeah, we'll take that shit, white people. You don't want it, we fucking with it. We actually, that's gonna be the biggest shocker to them when it's once they really find out what our whole goal is. Right. Don't say it. I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> once they find out that, that we got a whole nother thing we trying to do, it's gonna fuck them up. They really think we gonna come fuck they shit up. That ain't even in the plan. Nope. <laughs> Man, you ain't got nothing you to do with the plan. You think we trying to hustle up on some money to come fuck with y'all? Man, you crazy as hell. That ain't it. That is not it. Y'all just ain't seen the right niggas get money yet. See, the niggas always get money and flip the script. Yeah. Man, what? Wait till I get my paper. You about to see a nigga live ghetto magnificent. <laughs> Amazing. I'm talking about fucking sensational. <laughs> you ain't seen no shit like this. I might move to the hood and buy a Baptist church and turn that bitch to a crib. Mm. Just to be able to say Just cause I can. Cause the property value ain't shit. Right. Be like Rollo, nigga, I come by a whole hood. <laughs> nigga bought the whole complex. Crazy. Yeah, we, that, we never saw white people for totally different reasons. It's just cause white people didn't live in DC. They lived in certain, they had pockets of the city that was theirs. They, the, all that White House, Monument, Capitol Hill, we don't fuck with none of that shit. Once, once you get on North North Capitol and you see certain quarters, that's what the, that's what it started at for niggas. But Georgetown and Tenley Town and all them little places like that was where they would be. But as far as the city of the District of Columbia, it was a black chocolate city. Duh, like that shit was legit. I'm no white people know right now. It's streets that I could name in my hometown that I could name to people who have lived there. For their entire life, they will have no idea where these fucking places are. That's understandable. No, I'm talking about, now, you know, you've been to Oxford. You know that we done rode through my town in 12 minutes. Yeah. The whole shit. There's places I could name right now. These people wouldn't know how to get there, who stay there, nothing. Like, nigga, it's right across the street from where you live. <laughs> Man, he showed me, like, it. Going out there, seeing how that shit set up, like you have a whole, like all this land right here, all these houses will be my family. Like my cousins stay right here, yep. and then my aunt stay, the aunt stay right here, the, the the grandmama stay over here, and we stay right here. The 40, 50, 60 years. Everybody in the they, family stay on one hill. One hill. That shit was crazy. Stay over there. Smith stay back there. That's just, it's just like that. That's just how it is. That's why whole I like family. to say, nigga, On so Sunday, you go to somebody's house, you're going to see their whole family. It's that one house that every family go to and eat every Sunday. Ain't nothing but family. And you don't hear no rap nowhere. <laughs> they do not, hey man, Mississippi be on the old school. As soon as you get up, fuck around and wake up early. You're going to hear the old folks sitting around listening to the church. It could be, I'm talking about the crackheads, alcoholics. Everybody going to get up and find their goddamn radio and listen to their goddamn church service. Same church say we've been listening. I don't even know how these folks still alive, bro. Just wake up. My granddaddy wake the whole house up. We listen to church about four hours. Then straight blues after that. <laughs> Old air radio station. Hey, coming in live all the way from Oxford. We got our prayer list. Carlos Miller, your auntie Etta Lee Miller, put you on the prayer list. Dude. Why is you down there putting us on the prayer list? We ain't yeah. got but two aunties that go to church. The rest of my family are going to hell. <laughs> and it ain't that they don't they believe in God or yeah. not religious. Yeah. I got crazy. two aunties that go to church. That's crazy. Now my family the type of family that'll do everything for the church, but won't go. My uncle the pastor, so my auntie got to go. Now we'll cut the grass and food, set up the everything. But ain't nobody going to the program. That's crazy. <laughs> Did my part. <laughs> Mississippi ain't no getting away. You ain't running from no goddamn police. Cause they not about to chase you. 
These niggas will go sit in front of your grandma house. <laughs> and, and go knock on the door. It's so polite. Miss Miller, now your grandson out here selling all this dope. We're not going to chase him, but let him know. We coming. And you tell him that, and they'll leave your ass alone. Now, guess what? Now, when they catch your ass, like, we told you. We were coming. No, don't come up here crying. Don't come. We told you to tell him. Now we got it. Now we got it. The fucked up part is, they know you so well. They've been watching you your whole life, nigga. Motherfuckers, they no, he a good boy. Let him out. He gonna come to court. Now you make sure he come. That's how Mississippi work, nigga. These motherfuckers ain't playing with your ass. Lock your damn mama up. That's crazy. Somebody going. That's why I heard so. <laughs> that's why I heard so bad down with all the gentrification that they did in the city. Cause all them places that you don't know what it feel like to grow up somewhere and have experiences with places that don't exist no more. I know so many niggas that lost their lives for apartment complexes and shit that don't even exist no more. Niggas and die for places that ain't even ex don't don't exist. Niggas, like you, you walk past these the motherfuckers, you, you can't even exactly. You can't even walk past and see these places. I'm talking about motherfuckers lost just doing a hundred years in jail and lost their lives for places that don't exist no more. Like the childhood experiences that you have with with certain streets and blocks. You go on these blocks now, like 14th, 14th Street was a real big street for niggas that lived uptown. Like it was a Woolworth and an arcade and they had a whole bunch of shit on that strip. You know what I mean? And we used to go up there and fuck around. You know what I mean? You go up there, you go to the arcade, whether you going with your homies or you go with your mama when she going to wash clothes. But whatever it is that you was up there for, we was that's where we congregated and we met each other. That's where you that's how you got to know people from other parts of the you know the city that you lived in or the area that you lived in. Cause like I said, there wasn't no social media. So it was all outside. We had to go interact with each other. And now to go back to them places where you met so many people and had so many you know, just formative experiences in your life and it's a fucking best buy and the target there and people that don't look, that you never saw and it's like I said, we didn't see white people. Like if you saw a white person, it was like, what the fuck is this motherfucker doing over here? And now, just you know, they walking their dog, no disrespect to them, cause I mean, I mean, it's just the way the game set up, but they walking dogs you didn't know was a type of dog, you know what I mean? And they get to experience these same blocks that we, grew up and lived on in a way that we couldn't imagine. All the access, you mean to tell me these motherfuckers can go get their groceries and their DVDs and their body wash and all that shit from one place? Niggas was going all over the city. You had to catch two buses to get all that shit when we was growing up. But now, that yep. shit's amazing. That's why I don't respect a lot of gangsta ass niggas, cause y'all some bitches out here gonna rob everybody in the hood. Let one white dude stay on the block and then, man, you ain't did shit. Gonna kill all us though. Yeah, you know better than something that day. Fucking, oh, I can't stand you, motherfucker. No better than that. Rob every old lady, stole everything a nigga ever had. Goddamn, Dylan and Katie can come move over here though. Park a Volvo. Don't nobody steal the rims or nothing. How motherfuckers disgust me. Charleston, what's this? North Charleston Performing Arts Center. First show since January, 85 South show. The house is huge, the place is amazing. The bitch been sold out for like three weeks already. About to act the moment, I'm a fool. The new kings of comedy are being here tonight. Carlos Miller, Chico Bean, DC Young Fly. Y'all get ready. Get that camera out of my face, man.
why I go so hard by my dog, bro. I always feel like that, bro. If I feel like a nigga trying to do something by my partner, I go harder about they situation before yeah. my situation. That's a fact. I don't know why I would like that. You, do it. you see me, man? I go stupid. You just you been there. What? What? Now if it by me, I'm gonna come over the situation like man, I'm talking about. He don't really know me, you know right, what I mean? Right. I'm, a, I'm okay. What, well, like, you about to do something to anybody? But all they said, boy, man, you need to go get tripping. What you want to do? You ain't got to talk to me, nigga. Wait, you ain't even do nothing about nigga I fuck with. You ain't even do nothing to nobody that I fuck with. I don't know about y'all, but shit. I bet y'all I, 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 I be talking that shit out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know this one. I always been like that. Nigga, one call, that's all. They didn't call me, but he ain't got to explain that. He said, pull up, push it up. Can't got the other one. Yeah, when he come on. Yeah, really, really. Pushed up. Ain't got no hats. Point. Nah, they got lost somewhere, bro. Give me yours, man. Give me yours. 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 Give <laughs> Y'all waiting on us? Yeah. Give me the mic. What's the This one in there, get those people a hell of a show. 85 South Show live in Charleston, South Carolina, man. Shit, pushing through. Rest in peace to Nipsey Hustle, man. That shit hit the community hard. We found out about that shit on stage, but you know what? We still push through and gave the people a good show, man. Shit, got us focused. Real focused, man. Call your people, tell them you love them. We out of here. Stop being mad at everybody else, man. Love each other, man. Please. Love each other, man. Please, man. From us, from the 85 South Show, man. We telling everybody, man. We appreciate every piece of love that we get. We cherish it. But for all you motherfuckers that got that hate in your heart that want to see somebody dead because you can't figure out what you want to do with your life, then stop that shit, man. We losing too many precious brothers out here with this bullshit. When they see this shit, they want to be me. You can't you. You can't you. You can't you. You can't live through your eyes. Every time you wake up, everything he doing, you visualizing yourself doing. Hell, you fucking up. That ain't your, that ain't, that's not your vision. Yeah. You probably got the same dream, but you got different visions. Yeah. Niggas, yeah, niggas fail to realize. Everybody play basketball, but guess what? There's a front guard, there's a shooting board, there's a, there's a small board, there's a power board, there's a center. The center can't go in the game and think he's a front guard. You got the same dream, different vision, fool. You gotta be at the post, nigga. I can't get the post. It's a different vision for me. I gotta get a nigga bring them off a ball out of it. Get what I'm saying? And the grandmother, get what the fuck are the main reason the fuck are this? 
pass the ball. The shooting guard job is to shoot. You know what I'm saying? It's great to have a point guard and a shooting guard that can shoot. But guess what the point guard is there for? Make sure that the plays is being ran right. Everybody doing that just need small four. We need to power four. Power four is the back of who? The center, motherfucker. The small four is the back of who? Power four and the shooting guard, motherfucker. Right. Shooting guard, you really ain't got no hammer like that. Right. And it's your job. What is your job? To move around this bitch until you get open. What the fuck are you sitting there waiting for? He <laughs> didn't think constantly moving. Right. He mad. He took me to watch the fuck up. You gotta run into a nigga vision. Cause your vision was supposed to go this way. His vision was supposed to go this way. Y'all got the same goal, so get what? When y'all meet up, y'all need to head y'all own path, but y'all have the same goals. Man, whenever I, don't, I try my hardest not to, not to, not really give a fuck about somebody who's liking me or having a problem. I try my best to not have a problem with somebody. This hamburger right here, this is what I've been calling the hamburger all night. It's live in the flesh. This nigga got all the cheeseburgers. Hamburger, <laughs> <laughs> I used to be scared of that nigga though, you know. Wobble wobble!